Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Demon's Tear Plus. This, <laughs> I forgot the fucking plus on the end. This is a twin stick roguelike shooter from the team that brought you Riddled Corpses and Xenon Valkyrie. And one of those was good, one of those was bad. This one sits firmly in the middle, I'll tell you that much. So, you start out in town, there isn't much of a plot going on if I'm being perfectly honest with you. It's basically, 1200 years ago a demon rose and brought forth enemies that the heroes defeated and now in the present day they're back. It's basically nothing, it's just to justify going down into the dungeon. And, basically it all revolves around the diving down, earning D tokens, using that to get more stuff and hopefully eventually getting back to the top. So. The thing is that the game is actually really grindy, and that's one of the things that I don't really like about it. Allow me to demonstrate. So you've got several classes to pick from here. I've been playing the wizard, but there's a few others you can pick from. There's the knight, there's the archer, the cleric, the berserk, and the assassin. As you can see by the stats windows in the bottom middle there, they all have different stats when they start out. They all also have a unique skill. The knight can maximize his defense, so he takes less damage. The wizard has a smart bomb. The Archer has a Mind, Cleric has the ability to heal herself, the Berserker can max out his attack, and the Assassin, I assume those are some extra projectiles that she can use. Also, I do want to point out that yes, they all have massive tits. Like, the Wizard's got massive tits, the Assassin's got massive tits. It doesn't look like the Cleric has massive tits, but trust me, look at the art here. Those are some pretty good tits. Anyway, so... Yes, yeah, so you pick your class and you go down into the dungeon, you hopefully win, but you probably won't. And you get D tokens, and when you use those D tokens, you can use them to buy things. For example, you can buy the character classes, which are all pretty damn expensive. Because there are an absolute ton of things you need to spend tons of tokens on in this game. And it's kind of exacerbated by something not really needing to be here, so let me show you. There are two items here that are relatively useful. Red potions to get your health back, and silver keys to open prisoner cells. Those are pretty good, right? The prisoner cells basically add extra shots like option style in a scrolling shooter, right? But then you've got magic ropes. Magic ropes that... Magic ropes are only for escaping the dungeon. And when you escape the dungeon, you keep all your D tokens. But if you don't use the magic rope and you die, you lose all your D tokens. But here's the thing. These only cost 200 tokens a piece, and they give you 10 of them to start with. Which makes them feel like an entirely unnecessary feature. Because... Why? Like, why do you... Why would you bother doing that? There is an entire mechanic which is basically if you die in the dungeon, you get one chance to go back down and get the D tokens that you drop. But if you don't get them on that run, that's it, you're done. I still don't get why, though, because... It's still, it's relatively easy to get back down to where you die most of the time. And magic ropes cost so little currency, like, even with no boosts of any kind, you can still get 200 to uh, E tokens or whatever they are on the first floor. So the only thing you really have to worry about is running out of magic ropes, otherwise you won't be able to actually bring your tokens back out. Which just seems, it just seems unnecessary, like, extra busy work. Especially since they cost so little, I just don't know why they don't bother to make them an infinite. But that's not the worst way the game wastes your money, because at least those, are ch those things are cheap. These are expensive, so these are your weapons. And weapons give you bonus stats whenever you go into the dungeon for the first time, right? So, Blazing Storm, which is the weapon that I'm using right now, gives me plus one attack and plus one defense. Magma Rush gives me plus four HP. However, the entire downside to this system is that... You don't get to know what the, what stats the weapons have until you buy them. And this makes things really frustrating, because the Magma Rush and the Blazing Storm are the first two weapons I bought. Because, well, I wanted something that would be half decent for this character, right? I bought the Blazing Storm and I thought to myself, I might as well see what the Magma Rush is, because it might be better stats. Now, HP plus 4 doesn't mean as much as you think it does, because hearts are in quarters in this game, so every full heart gives you 4 HP, although some monsters do do more than one point of damage when they hit you. Pretty basic stuff, right? However, I had to spend money to know that. A ton of money. We're talking like 
15 grand on that run and 22 grand on that one. So I had to go down and get a lot of money in order to come back and get a weapon that I didn't end up using that I could have used on another character class or another weapon instead. Because Mountain Rush gives you 4 HP, which is worth like 100 coins at the end of a dungeon floor. Blazing Storm gives you 1 defense and 1 attack, which is worth something like 400 to start off with, right? So even just in outright monetary cost, it's better. It's worth more to me. But I'm not going to know that until I buy the weapon. So you have to be going down looking for thousands upon thousands of these D tokens in order to actually buy these weapons, and it, it's just obnoxious. It wastes your time, it wastes your money, and I hate it. I legitimately hate it. I think it's an absolutely stupid idea, and letting people see what they're going to buy before they buy it really seems like a, a player-friendly thing to do. Which is weird, because this game, like, it lets you spend D tokens. See, like, look, I can spend a few... D tokens here. You can spend all your D tokens to make sure that you can go in and not have to spend and uh, not have any to lose if you end up dead. But for some reason, they won't let you see what the stats of the weapons that you're going to buy are before you buy them. Why won't they let you do that? I don't know. It just it seems entirely against the point. But anyway, enough standing around here. You can also go and talk to villagers, but. The English isn't the best, doesn't really tell you anything you can't figure out yourself, so down we go. There is a plot, I... Did I bring the plot up in this recording or was it the previous one? But either way, it doesn't really matter. The plot mainly comes up in interludes between dungeon segments the first time you go down. And the entire story seems to be how a father gave up his flesh and blood for demonic power, and then used it to try to take over the world. That's the long and the short of the story that I've seen so far. I haven't finished the game, I've been playing it for about two, going on maybe three hours at this point. I think that's being a little bit generous though, I haven't been keeping exact track of my playtime. And I've seen something like three of those interludes. I've got it about halfway through the game, basically. But there is a tier 2 and a tier 3 to encourage you to go back down again. I'm assuming that's probably also got, like, extra story content or, like, more story content. That's me assuming that's, that'll end on the first cycle. I'm not that dumb. At least I like to think I'm not. But anyway, Demon's Tier. Basic controls are really simple. Move with the left stick, shoot with the right stick. You do also have a few other buttons, of course. The L button will tell you what direction the objective is in if the objective already hasn't been accomplished, which is a nice touch considering the objectives are different on each floor. We'll get to why that's a bit silly shortly. The square button, which hasn't actually charged up yet. I thought that started out charged, but apparently not. The square button lets you use your special ability. And the circle button, or the R button, will let you use an ability known as a dodge. It's not a dodge. I don't know why they called it a dodge. It seems... It's, it's very obviously not a dodge. And yet, for some reason, they call it a dodge. It doesn't make any sense. But, as I was saying, the dodge makes you invulnerable for a second or so. And it reflects bullets back at the enemies. You can use this on regular enemies as well as bosses, and they outright recommend that you do when you are faced with an attack that you can't fend off. Also, you can get upgrades. Pretty basic stuff. Extra HP? Check. Defense to make hits not hit as hard? Check. Extra damage? Check. Distance and speed? Check. Uh, D token combo is the most interesting of them all. Which is basically, it just gives you more D tokens over time because you'll eventually just earn more by killing more monsters end on end. And you can also add stamina, which is how fast your ability regenerates. There are some, it says in the game that there are some classes that this is more useful on than others. And to be fair, pretty much every stat is more useful on some classes and not others. 
like for example, if you want to like actually take the Berserker, which has four attack and nothing else going for it, to its maximum potential, you probably want to be hammering away at that potential by increasing the stats that they're good at, because the initial stat boosts are cheaper. That was my phone going off, by the way. The, the initial stat boosts are cheaper, so someone who starts off with good attack is going to have really good attack with the initial boosts, right? Here's what silver keys are used for. It's just an extra shot. Nothing wrong with that, of course. I'm just saying that's what it is. Gold keys are used to unlock are used to unlock big gold chests. Sometimes they just have health potions in them. Sometimes they have ruse, which will give you extra bonus stats. Very useful in that sense. But that's pretty much all there is to find. We'll talk about. We'll talk about that later, though. Oh, I get it. Using the L button actually removes your mana. Fair enough. I guess I never really noticed that. Probably more useful to save it for the smart bombs, if I'm being honest with you. But as I was saying, the initial stat upgrades are much cheaper. So you'll only pay like $100. 100 gold, I should say. To get your first health upgrade, right? But it gets more expensive over time. The thing is... Considering that all of the upgrades are the same price for every character, it means that everyone can make up for their initial weaknesses by the end of the first floor pretty fast. Like, this is me we're talking about. I like starting out as a glass cannon, but there are some bosses and some enemy types in this game which just love to get hits in on me that I don't expect. So, I end up needing to upgrade my HP a bit, but it's pretty simple. Purely because of the fact that, well, it's so cheap in the beginning. And it's a pretty similar story uh, for every class as well. Like, you've got the Knight, who doesn't start out very strong, but once you upgrade his attack, he's basically very strong. And it's a similar sort of story for every other character. So, every... I can see every class, other than their, like, individual abilities. Like, say, maybe you want to focus on the Stamina Regen a bit more because of the Archer and her landmines. Maybe you want to focus on the... Same thing for the Berserker, to make sure that your attack is as high as possible for as long as possible. But, you know, that's just... Other than that, I imagine that all the classes are going to feel relatively the same, because their weapons don't actually act differently, based on what character you are, or what weapon you have, or whether or not you upgrade to a different weapon via the Blacksmith. It's all the same weapon, all the time, basically. Just this straight firing... Thoroughly accurate, three or four shots at a time under regular circumstances style shot. So, I can see, like, I've played as the Wizard and the Knight, and outside of, like, those obvious stat differences at the beginning, all the characters basically feel like they play the same. And, as a result, I more or less play them the same. I just give them, like the same sort of stats, just with a little bit of a bonus towards the attack, because there are boss fights in this game, as we're about to find out. They've got really long health bars and relatively easy to avoid and, and or deflect attacks, as you can see. So, the less amount of time that you have to spend in these gauntlets of boring the better, basically. And when you've got maxed out attack, that's pretty easy to do, if you're just relatively decent with your quote-unquote dodge button, right? Wow, they gave me tons of health, and I didn't even have any health to be recovered, because I don't think I've been hit in this game yet. Ain't that something, Chief? Uh, we'll just give myself more attack, why not? You do want to up your speed a bit though, because there are monsters that will chase you down, and those can be really annoying to deal with if you don't have the speed to hold them off. Also yeah, explosions are like really big, but... Oh, fuck, I hate those floor tiles. This is the only, uh, this is the only floor that has floor tiles that I always manage to completely miss. It's really frustrating, but anyway. That's basically the long and the short of the- fuck. 
fucking bombs. Like, the explosions on them are quite small, but they're still quite big. It's really annoying. Anyway, you've basically seen the long and the short of the game. Fight your way through it. Fuck's sake, how do I miss those every single time? They're just so dark in the background, it makes it really hard to fucking see them. But yes. That is, that this is basically the long and the short of the game. Wander around dungeons, open chests, hope that you've got the keys that you need to open the, them up. If you don't, they're probably hit, there's probably one hidden on the level somewhere. Rinse and repeat over and over again. But there's next to no variety. That's the problem. Most of these monsters are the same. They'll charge at you to get a melee attack in. Sometimes they'll like run away, but it's not like it can't be solved by doing the same thing, which is shooting in their general direction and hoping for the best. You've got your block that you just pop out whenever you see that you're about to get shot. It recharges pretty quick. There doesn't seem to be any way to make it faster. There's no class that has it be slower by default, so it's pretty similar. It would kind of have to be, because the rate that some of the, the later bosses can throw out attacks, it would be kind of dick to have the to have a slow block rate. Especially since some of the attacks are just otherwise undodgeable. But yeah, it just ends up feeling the same after a while, because the monsters are relatively similar. Sometimes it's like a variant boss, like a different boss, but it's usually handled in the same way. The bullet patterns aren't particularly interesting, they're just kind of annoying to get around. So it just ends up feeling a bit samey after a while. All the Fuck's sake, those goddamn spikes. It's so annoying when they've got like two different things on top of them as well, like the bloody candle and the chest distracting me from the spike holes in the ground. I fucking hate those spikes. They're the, the, they're the worst enemy to deal with in the entire game, and considering the fact that this game has lots of other enemies. Yeah. You can press star to get a map of the uh, level, and you can also see up the top how long until the reaper comes in. It's basically the ghost from Spelunky. It'll kill you if it hits you. Uh... Like, outside of all of that, I don't even know, like, th there's, there's nothing that really gives the game any meaningful variety. It just comes down to shoot the enemy. Did they die? If not, shoot them again. I can understand why some of the classes might need to use their abilities a bit more to survive, like the cleric, who isn't particularly good at this sort of thing, might need her heal ability. More often than not, and she'll probably become quite OP if you manage to get enough gold to get that uh, stamina recharge stat high enough. But yeah, otherwise it just it's just kind of the same. And they try to get around this by having a objective system. Basically, on every floor, the objective is predetermined. So you need to well, not predetermined, but you know it's procedurally generated, right? More bullets. But yeah, it's procedurally uh, it's procedurally generated along with the level, right? So it'll be destroy all the bombs, destroy all the enemies, open all the chests, destroy the boss monster, which doesn't really need to be handled in any different way than any regular monster. There's one which is like, defeat all the enemies and fend off the reaper, but... They forget to mention that fending off the Reaper is literally just shooting at once and it comes right at you, so there's basically no danger to it. But it basically, again, it just... It all eventually just goes ending up in the same direction. So, if it's open up all the chests, it's basically just wander around until you find all the chests. If it's kill all the enemies, it's wander around until you find all the enemies and then kill all the enemies. And you're probably going to be doing that anyway, because, well, you kind of need to, otherwise you're never going to be able to get to the exit. Uh, explode all the bombs. Same thing. Just wander around and look for the, look for the particularly religious bombs that have got, like, the crosses going on on top of them, right? So it basically just boils down to the same thing over and over again. Explore the floor, kill all the enemies, open all the treasure, 
and destroy all the bombs on your way through. And you want to destroy all the bombs on your way through because, well, they're there and they can hurt you if you get too close and someone decides to shoot them. So, you know, why wouldn't you shoot them on the way? And it basically just turns into the same thing every floor because it's, it's going to be you doing the same thing every time. There is a five minute time limit before the Reaper shows up, right? Shit. There is a five minute time limit before the Reaper turns up, which, you know, it, at least it makes you want to go through the floors relatively quickly, but I've played a fair few floors of this, and I haven't come across a single floor yet which has got me even close to getting over that time limit. I've always had at least a minute to spare, which just seems like too much, you know? It doesn't really feel like a, something I really need to worry about because it's just so lax. And considering that you have the ability to flee the dungeon at any time, it means there's basically no danger. As long as you can hit the triangle button fast enough, you'll be safe. You can just go straight back Spend whatever currency you earn, and that's it. Is there another way into that hallway? Yeah, but it's all the way around. Six out of eight, yeah, sure, I'll show you where the next one is. It's basically directly above me, okay. As a, as a result, the game is just really repetitive. That's the worst thing about it. It doesn't have that much going for it. It doesn't have, uh, like, the sort of variety that you got going on with, say, the Binding of Isaac's items or... Basically, any other rogue likes just general replayability just goes out the window here. There isn't even things like secret rooms, as far as I can tell. Oh look, we might actually run out of time on this one, because this is a really annoyingly big level. Alright, what do we got? Uh, we got 1500. Might as well just give myself as much HP as I can possibly get, because I'm going to need it at some point, one way or another. Oh goody! It's this boss fight again! This one doesn't even seem to have like a, a variant on it. It just seems to have like this one boss, which does this all the time. It's just, sometimes it fires out a string of shots that are really easy to block. Sometimes it fires out one shot, which is really easy to just walk around. Sometimes these things drop like extra creatures, but they're really easy to take out. And you just win really easily without so much as taking your hit. The boss fights aren't in this game aren't really that interesting either. Oh look! More healing! And more healing! Like usually these chests here are supposed to give you like five grand in um... Five grand in D tokens. Which is at least useful. But man, I'm really getting unlucky with just the free heals. It's not the free heals that I want guys, god damn it. I will also point out that just due to this like lack of variety, the games and the floor, the floor just feels, each individual floor, I should say, feels way longer than it needs to. Like five minutes seems like a bit much. If you want to be, if for at least one floor with such little variety in like the gameplay style, if you want my advice, shrink it down by half, add more monsters, increase the base fire rate, and make the floors only last like three minutes at most. If you're not going to add like any like major kinds of variety, that's what I would recommend you do. Make it fast and make it fast paced and easier to take on in small bites. 
Because I gotta admit, I'm just I'm not a fan of how long it is at this point. This is probably the hidden enemy that I need to take out to get the key to unlock the chest. Okay, smart on time. More healing! Not even gold! Or a rune that I can show off what those are, but as I... I think I said this in this recording, but they're just extra stat boosts. I don't know if there are, like, more in-depth ones later on that, like, will put a stat down in exchange for a major up on another stat. Because every single rune I've found so far has only been one star quality, according to the game itself. But either way, it's still just boring, because it doesn't really change the gameplay up that much. It just becomes the same repetitive grind. And you want as many of those uh, golden keys as possible, just because they let you open big chests. I'm sure someone could sneak in a big chest pun in relation to every single one of the female characters in this game, but... I'm not that smart. I open the floor to you in the comments. See what I mean about them chasing you down? It can get a bit weary just having to constantly back away like that. I could leave this floor at any time, but I really do want the B tokens. Because seriously, the, the highest tier weapons in this game cost a million D tokens. And I've only got 50k right now, so... Like, so... I can barely even see some of the shots coming at me in this one because it's got that absolutely obnoxious, like, fiery shit around the outside of the screen and it's absolutely ridiculous. At least I can say the game's performance is okay. It doesn't, it doesn't drag on that much in terms of just overall performance. I really need to look at the screen for this one, I apologize. Fire off my, um... Smart bomb for the bonus damage there. Also, your hitbox is kind of wonky in this game. Like, even with the shield on, it just doesn't seem to... Like, especially on this boss. I don't know what it is about this boss, but the hitboxes just seem wonky as shit, and the shield doesn't seem to help you out at all. I really don't know why. Although I'll give the guy a little bit of credit for instantly taking away all of the shots and enemies on screen when the boss runs out of health. I'm not going to argue with that approach. See? 5,000 D tokens. But I've only got one HP left. So there's base. Uh, well, no, hang on. I can, I've got health potions, don't I? Full health! Honestly, that seems almost too easy. Considering that you can carry three of them into a dungeon at once. I mean, damn, you could give me like a challenge or something for them. Like, finish this level within two minutes and you get a... See what I mean by chasing you down? That's just even more obnoxious. But yeah, like, finish this level within two minutes to earn something, uh to earn this. Finish this level within one minute to earn something even better. You get the general idea. There are a lot of things you could do, you could add to this game to make it more interesting, but it's just really thin on the ground, really repetitive, and it's got a couple of like really annoying and otherwise like not exactly player friendly things going on with some player friendly things going on. Like, why would you hide the stats, the weapons that I could buy while making it so that as soon as the boss dies, all their projectiles go away. It's just weird. Like, one's player hostile and one's player friendly. It doesn't make any sense.
It does look okay, but there is one thing I need to go like to the hub town and demonstrate, which we will probably end up doing like relatively shortly. Because admittedly, I haven't actually been. I mean, I've been this far in the game. I've. Ooh. Oh, it's only distance. I was hoping for actual proper attack ups, but I guess not. Because screw me. But yeah. I can't actually show you the options menu while I'm in here. Because there's like no way to actively access the options menu. It's got sound effect and background music sliders. You know, the basics. But I gotta tell you, man. There's one option in there that you kind of have to see to believe. Smart bomb, fuck it. Wow, I didn't even hurt him that badly. Freaking tanks. I'm gonna have to up my bloody um, attack power a few times, aren't I? At least I've got the goal to do it. One other thing I should point out about this game's shooting, by the way, is that 99% of the time it's fine, you'll be able to hit the targets you're going for without much of a hassle. But the weird thing about the way the game picks your direction while you're attacking is that. Your attacks only seem to be able to go in 16 directions. Now, if you've played something like Smash TV before, you'll know what I mean when I say 8-way shooting. Because 8-way shooting is what that game does. It means that you can only fire in 8 directions. Up, down, left, right, up, left, up, right, down, left, and down, right. This game doesn't have full 360-degree shooting, but it definitely has 16 way shooting, where it adds an extra direction in between, which means that if there's an enemy on a very particular angle, they'll be a lot harder to hit than normal. It's weird. I don't know why you decided to go with this instead of just letting you fire in every direction, because you'd think firing in every direction would be easier to figure out in the long run. Just in general, in code. I've coded before, and I know what it's like to code, and instead of having to code like 16 directions or something. Why not have it so that you can fire in full 360 and just rotate the sprite? I don't know what development kit he used to make this, so... You know. I can't say that it would be easy to do that. But this is the PlayStation Vita we're talking about. It should have more power than that, surely. I am so about to run out of time. Alright, we've got two enemies left. And there they both are. The Reaper shows up early. Thankfully the game tells me what direction he's in so I can go and shoot the bastard just the once. And now I get to run in the complete opposite direction. Because the exit's right there, fantastic. Alright, give me more attack, more attack, more attack. And how much have I got left? 600? Uh... More speed. And that's all I can afford. And I've got three dudes along with me, so I get extra... Whatever the hell it's called. Also, if you're wondering what that uh, blue circle is, it just protects you from enemies that show up early on in the floor. Again, another pretty player-friendly option that they had. But for whatever reason, there are just things that like don't work in that direction whatsoever. Destroy all bombs. Fair enough. They really do line up like next year and behind you like freaking um, options like in a game like Radius. Didn't mean to press that. Doesn't matter though. Also... I do apologize for how late this video is coming out, but as we all know, Sony are incompetent, 
and they haven't updated their store in weeks on the Vita. So every time that I checked for new games on the Vita store, I was thinking, oh, there's nothing new. Oh, wait, they haven't updated the store in weeks. That would probably be why. I hit the goddamn objective button again. Like, I don't know why it's on L. Like, you would think L would be great for your special ability, right? Especially when you're playing with something like the Archer. So you can drop, like, a proximity mine. But no, they put that for objective instead, because they're silly. Give me that health potion. But yeah, I, I basically had to go and look on the PlayStation Store itself. And I, I've actually been looking at this game. I'm not going to say I've been looking forward to this game, but I've been looking at this game. I've been remaining relatively interested in when it was going to come out. I didn't know when it was going to come out, which is why I was checking the fucking Vita store in the first place, you goddamn incompetent bastards. I pressed the L button again, fuck's sake. Yes, I was trying to find out when this game would come out so I could grab it, see what it was like. Because although I didn't like, uh, although I didn't like Xenon Valkyrie, I thought Riddled Corpses was pretty good. So my two teammates appear to have been stuck, gone stuck behind walls again because the AI pathfinding is not very good. This doesn't help me in the slightest when we've got. All these fucking dudes running around, I've suddenly lost half my firepower. Doesn't help me at all. Oh yeah, there's another room by the way, that's... Another fucking distance! Are you serious? At least I know I never have to do my, um, upgrade my fucking distance again, that's for fucking sure. Jesus. It's like they're trying to kill me. Back down the way I came. Still missing a bomb. Great. Oh, look. The other one's gotten stuck by... Oh, no. Hang on. We've got the other two back. That's a net positive. Where's the last bomb? The second to last bomb, actually. The last bomb. Nope, never mind. That was the last bomb. Usually it pops up that arrow to let you know that, hey, you've only got one objective left and it's over here, so I'll save you the trouble, but... Nope, not this time. Uh, I don't need distance anymore, that's for sure. Uh, attack, 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 and... More speed? More speed. Oh! Boss time. Well, we'll see how this goes. I can't even see what it is because it just got lit up in white as soon as I started shooting it. Okay, it's, uh, it's very clearly something quite disturbing. Where'd it go? You wanna come back so I can shoot you now? At least that's a neat effect. I'll at least give this game, as much as I did like Riddled Corpses and Xenon Valkyrie credit, it does the whole like retro graphics thing without being like obnox obnoxious or really low quality about it. So you know, take your wings where you can get them. Would I recommend the game though? Hell no. It's just so boring. That's its problem. All of the, like, little things and mechanics that it's got that it does... Just... Yeah, screw it. I've got one hit left. I do not trust myself to win this fight. 
It does a couple of neat things, but it's just really repetitive. And a couple of the things that it does to make you want to make you waste shit. Like let's see what's the, what this weapon has. Two attack and eight HP. Honestly, that's not too bad. Still, the fact that they make you spend the money before you can actually see what it is is just obnoxious to me personally. I guess I could spend the rest on another class, but I don't think I'll be playing this again. Because it's it's too repetitive. A couple of the things are a bit shit. And I just don't find myself enjoying it very much. So, there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.